child of the 1970s likely spent some time drooling over a Heroes World ad. If you are a Mego collector, you probably still do. In these pre-internet days, those beautifully drawn pages were the only evidence for some of us that certain toy lines ever existed. Nothing spread the word about superhero merchandise quite like a Heroes World catalog. That's why I wanted to devote this episode of Vintage Mego to pay some tribute to this wonderful operation. The Backstory Heroes World was started by Ivan Snyder, a CPA by trade who, while working for Cadence, the company that owned Marvel Comics, started their mail order division in the early 1970s. While every ad in comics was devoted to children, in a 1982 interview, Snyder explained nobody had done anything specific to the comics such as a Spider-Man doll. The licensing department of Marvel reported to me when I was there in 1972, it was in its infancy. Snyder contacted Marvel licensees such as Mego and Durham Industries to check on the availability of toys and novelties. He placed ads for those items in the comics themselves and drew an unexpectedly strong response. However, Cadence sold Marvel in the mid-1970s and the new owner no longer wished to pursue mail order. Snyder, seeing that he had potential, decided to buy the business. In 1975, Superhero Enterprises was born, with its first location being the basement of the Snyder home. Not much later, the company relocated to Morristown, New Jersey. The first store was set up like a catalog showroom store. A customer entered, looked at what was on display, and an employee would fetch the merchandise from the back. The success of the retail location spawned a second outlet. This time it was a Livingston, New Jersey shopping mall. At this time an agreement was made with DC Comics and now both houses were carried by the growing chain. Due to the fact that the term superhero is owned by the big two, after it was purchased from Mego, the Snyders changed their business name to Heroes World after being granted permission by the big two for the word hero. The early days had the Snyders receiving numerous calls for Batman, sometimes ten times a day, the Snyders humored these calls mainly because they thought they were sincere. Snyder kept a close eye in trends in this fat-oriented business. He didn't increase buying Superman items when the movie came out, but was quick to jump on the Smurfs. He considered Star Wars to be the most successful for the Heroes World chain and considered their items basic stock. While the Heroes World chain bought smart for most part, Snyder mentioned in a 1982 interview he'd made a few blunders. For example, he mentioned, we bought Battlestar Galactica. By 1982, the Heroes World chain consisted of 12 stores, 10 of them in mall environments. Initially, mall agents didn't want to rent to the stores, but changed their tune when it was shown how much traffic they were generating. However, Heroes World's biggest mark on pop culture would have to be their full-color comic book advertisements and the catalogs they produced in the 1970s. The catalog was produced in conjunction with the Joe Kubert School of Art. Kubert and the Snyders collaborated on a hero called Snyderman, who Snyder described as a superhero in his own right who fights bad toys and guides readers through pages of the catalog. Snyderman is accompanied by Snidey, his green furry sidekick. There's a rumor out there that Snidey is meant as a bit of a parody of Ivan Snyder, and that kind of makes me laugh. Many future comic book superstars would work on the Heroes World catalog, such as Steve Bissett, Dave Dorman, Tom Mandrake, just to name a few. As a kid growing up outside of Toronto, uh, sometimes opportunities to see new toys were limited, and the Heroes World catalog and advertisements were like a window into a world I did not know. And if you had asked eight-year-old me if my parents could take me anywhere in the world, it would not have been Disney World. It would have been Heroes World. But I'm not alone in that, so let's hear from a few of my friends. Heroes World to me was ultimately two things. It was a store and it was a catalog. The store for me when I grew up, uh, I grew up. I, I was a total '70s kid, and uh, I grew up in Westchester County, New York, in White Plains at the Galleria, which was one of the first ever 
malls that I think ever existed, not the first, but one of the first, they had Heroes World, the store. And I remember that just sort of caught my eye and popped up one day. I don't know how I found it, but there it was, and it was the only store I cared about other than the cinema that they had there. And uh, I walked in there and uh, that was an experience like no other because I'd walk in and just everything was, was geared to me and I couldn't buy it all even though I wanted to. My memories of the Heroes World catalog was that was a comic book that told you all the cool superhero stuff in the universe. That there was actually a Captain America t-shirt out there. A Fantastic Four t-shirt. Nowhere in the world did you ever see in JCPenney's or Sears or Kmart, did you ever see a superhero t-shirt. So this was literally a book that came to your house that told you what every cool superhero thing in the world was, including, of course, a whole big page of Migos. I remember the ads in the comics because um, they had drawings of the, the Mego action figures. Like, I remember the drawing of the, the Green Goblin because he had socks. Remember, they drew the socks on him instead of boots. And I remember that ad. But I remember the... Um, and I thought, I thought that was cool. And the figures that weren't out yet, they would take drawings from the comics and put them in with the Migos, the drawings that look like Migos. So you would see, like, Thor, Conan would be a drawing. But from the comic book, next to the Green Goblin with socks, it was really cool. But I remember the... Uh, the Heroes World ads, they were like uh, comics. The whole ad was like a comic. And what I remember about that is, of course, the character, the superhero they had, he had the lightning bolts on his head. I think they call him Snyder Man. Yeah. And he had the lightning bolts. But what I really like in there, what I remember looking at for hours and hours, were the posters or T-shirt designs. Because remember when King Kong, with the new, the King Kong was out in the movie theaters with Jessica Lange, that movie? Yeah. And that it was always crumbling the building and I would have looked for those and and I remember uh, Farrah Fawcett and Raquel Welch because I didn't know that's my first introduction to Raquel Welch that little tiny photo <laughs> because I didn't know how to spell it and I remember <laughs> calling her Reckler Reckler and I asked my mom or dad I said how do you say that no that's Raquel Welch and then I realized Welch was like the jelly that's like Welch's jelly so I remember that like, and I, I have a few of those by the early 1990s, Heroes World would become the third largest comic distributor in North America. It would then be purchased by Marvel Comics and be involved in something of a fiasco. I choose to remember Heroes World as a pioneer, something that I spent hours looking at as a kid. It educated me, I learned from it. I even figured out why I couldn't get a red Sonya t-shirt in my size. That's why I thought Heroes World deserves its own episode of Vintage Mego, just because it made us Mego fans. So tell me your Heroes World stories. Did you get to go to one of the stores? Did you do the mail order? Or were you just a dreamer like me? Let me know in the comments below, or in our Facebook group, Mego Mania, or you can always hit us up at the forums at MegoMuseum.com. Also, if you're new to this, please consider hitting like and subscribe to this channel. This is what we do all the time. Until next time, thank you for watching, take care, and have fun with your toys.